All right, guys, what we're going to do here is actually um, I'm going to talk about the Tuner Lab Programmer V1. Um, it is a very affordable programmer to program uh, the SST27SF512 chip. Now, this chip is uh, actually widely used in the automotive industry, um, used for uh, uh, burning programs onto and then utilizing them into the ECU for um, fuel and ignition timing modification. So uh, let's take a look at that chip burner. You can actually get one from tunerwizard.com and it's right here, the Tuner Lab Programmer V1. It goes for about $80. So this programmer is actually a very simple programmer to use because all the offset and everything's already been preset for you already. Uh, and the good thing about this is it supports uh, Windows XP up to Windows 10. Basically what I have here is I've already got the uh, chip connected to um, oh, the chip in the dip socket and it's connected to a USB to my computer. Um, so if we take a look at this in the device manager we'll see that uh, that port 5 is the uh, programmer okay uh, and this um, programmer when you purchase it to through the website it actually comes with the software you can download that software um, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually, actually going to execute it <clears throat> and I'm just going to go through the basics of using this software here um, on this screen here, you know, it's very intuitive, very simple to use, has your serial param parameters, um, but all you're going to do is actually, the only one you really have to do is change this one here. We're going to select, select COM5, um, and then what we'll do next is we'll connect to the unit, okay? Uh, what I normally typically like to do is click on the firmware, uh, and it tells me right away because it actually sends a signal over to the programmer. And the programmer sends this bit of information back over to me so that I can see it. So this tells me I'm connected. I'll clear the log. Now to load a map uh, in here, to stage it, to get it uh, ready to program, um, you can do it one of two ways. You can go to File and then Open and then select the file. Uh, I typically just do it the easier way, which is grab the map, drag and drop it, and it'll automatically load it for you. And if I look at the open file data tab, this is actually the data that's being opened, uh, represented in hex. Okay, so this is what I've opened. Okay, data received is the data uh, that's received from the chip when you run a read. Uh, and we'll demonstrate that in a bit here. But let's take a look at this really quick here. So I have. Um, my file open here. What I'm going to do is actually burn this file and then verify it. That way uh, you will know the process or you have an idea of how to run this programmer. So let's go back to the display log tab. What I do first typically is I'll, I'll check to see if it's blank. Uh, and this is telling me it is not blank. So there's something on that chip. And what I do next is um, I'll do an erase to actually erase the chip. Okay. Now once the chip is erased, I'm going to run that blank check again just to make sure that it is blank. Okay, so the chip is successful. That means it's blank. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to program this chip. Uh, and we can do that by this button here. We're going to write to the chip. After we're done writing to the chip, what we want to do next is actually read back from the chip. Okay, so it's done writing to the chip. Now we want to read back from the chip. The reason for that is uh, we want to read it and then we can verify it. And what it's actually doing is once you read back from the chip, there'll be data in this receive tab here. Uh, and then what you can do Okay, if we go to this tab, this is the data that's, well, that was read from the chip. Now what we can do is we can actually click verify and it'll compare data received versus data open. Uh, this will let you know if 
it passed or not and in this instance it passed so uh, this tells me the chip uh, was burnt successfully so that's actually it to burn a chip now if you want to just read it and save it um, what you can do is just read it and then when you're done with reading it you can go to file save as give it a name save it as a bin file and then that would be it so what we can do here is okay once that's done we can go to file save as and we'll save something as testing one two three four dot bin okay so saved as one two three four dot bin sorry saved as testing one two three four dot bin then what we can do is we can open this in chrome to verify that it's actually that it actually worked and, and by looking the, at this it looked like it worked uh, if it didn't work and you received corrupt data then this file wouldn't open in Chrome uh, this is very handy for burning files in Chrome uh, uh, burning sorry burning Chrome files uh, Uber data tuner pro uh, ghetto dyne and uh, Niztune and a lot of those other software out there that requires um, 256 kilobits of data stored on the chip. So, uh, 512 is actually what most uh, programmers and most users are using nowadays uh, because the 256 is just not readily available. So, uh, I hope this gives you an insight to programming with the Tutor Lab Programmer V1. Uh, it's actually a very simple program to use for uh, programming and also reading and saving uh, the program files. So. Uh, if you like this, uh, please subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to post in the comment below. Thank you.